Now it's time to talk about cosmology. And I don't mean cosmetology like in this dumb picture here. I just thought that was kind of funny. They made it look like she's got something really crazy coming out of her head, but we mean cosmology. Just like people are like, oh, you're an astronomer. Great. What's my sign? Tell me about my future. It's like, no, it's astronomy, not astrology, right? So in cosmology, we talk about the um, evolution of the universe on large, large scales. So this, this sort of analogy here that what's been, you know, a way to visualize what the universe is doing is to think about a balloon where you actually draw some little dots. Those would be galaxies. You draw like little squiggles. And what you can do then is, uh, you know, as you blow up the balloon, what will happen is the dots themselves will still be dots. And they usually, they don't get too much bigger. The dots themselves will, will remain the same size. Which means as the universe expands, for example, the galaxies themselves, they don't stretch. The galaxies stay together because under their own gravity, they're going to stay together. But the spaces between galaxies, that stretches. You can see that all those little squiggle lines, they'll stretch. So the squiggle lines become longer. That's to explain the red shifted um, nature of the light. So all the light's going to come in red, redder because of the uh, universe expanding. So we have this idea that because these galaxies are receding, you know, they're all going away from us, we have this thing we call a red shift. So this equation here is on your data booklet. It just says that Z, Z is called a red shift and has no units. And there's two ways of looking at it. You can say, well, I mean, red shift implies, remember, a difference in where you found those uh, spectral lines. So one of them could be literally d depending on the spectral lines. You could say delta lambda. Delta lambda is a change in wavelength. Right, so that would be measured in meters, of course. So I'll put that in maybe. We say plus if it increases, so if it's redshifted, and very small examples, only in the example of galaxies coming towards us in our local group, just the closest galaxies like Andromeda, those might be decreased. Pretty much everything else, 99.9% .9 of it will be increasing. Um, so this would be the change in wavelength. So you have to look at, okay, what was the wavelength that you detected? What should it have been in the lab? Great, that distance between them, that's delta L, uh, delta lambda. Lambda zero here, that's the emitted wavelength. In other words, that's what you find in the lab. So you could say that delta lambda is sort of like the lambda minus lambda zero. You could say that's sort of like that one there. So it's like what you actually detect minus what it should have been in the lab when it wasn't moving. So you could sort of contain that little term in there. So, uh, But it's also kind of, not exactly, but kind of the same as just V over C, where V is a relative velocity of the source of light. So like that galaxy, and that could be in meters per second. Um, oops, we normally don't draw it like that, don't we? Say meters times second to the minus one. Or we could do it, we often do it as a multiple of C. For example, we could say um, it's uh, 0 0.9 C, for example, or V equals 0 0.82 C. If you do the relativity option, um, obviously you shouldn't be doing both, you should only do one. But in the relativity option, we talk a lot about this sort of thing. So all the velocities are always in terms of C, so that's what we say V over C. Uh, and speed of light, of course, that's in meters per second, technically. Um, and notice because it's a speed over a speed, that means those units have no, that has no unit, it cancels out. Or you could say this is in meters over meters, and that of course cancels out. That's why redshift has no units. So this is one important thing from cosmology. Another one is the scale factor or the size of the universe. I love this from redshift, I want all the data. This is actually taken from um, a really nice blog actually that I really like. She doesn't write anymore, but um, yeah, it's a great image that she had done. What was it called? Hyperbole and a half, I think was the original name. Anyway, I wanted to show you this. Um, this is the size of the universe. We call it scale factor. But the size of the universe, the problem is we don't really know what units to put here. It's kind of funny because we don't really know what values to put here. We're like, uh, I don't know, because it's in four dimensions, right? I mean, it's space time. So how do you draw that? We don't. We just ah, size of the universe at zero and then uh, bigger. We don't even know what numbers to put in here. Time even is awesome. Like, well, there must have been a zero. There must be some time where we are now and then uh, later. So that's a little bit crazy, but you still can look at these sort of things and try to guess some things about the universe. So here, what we can do, for example, we can draw us right here and say, this is the present time, let's just assume. So present time, we must be at some time right now. Good news, we actually know this value right here. Well, I know that's about 13.7 uh, billion years, so giga years. 
So we know it's about 13.7 billion years old. We know this distance. We don't really know the size because it's hard to measure. Uh, we don't really know what's going to happen later exactly. There's all these different ideas about the universe, about the shape of this curve. If you want to learn more about that, take a look at the HL videos about this. It gets really interesting because uh, it turns out it's kind of mind-blowing what's happening. But um, size, size of the universe, it's kind of like this. So we have another equation here. This redshift, the same one from before here that we had found. Sometimes, by the way, IB questions will be one where they kind of have you just relate both of them. This Z is equal to that Z or Z if you're American, right? So that means that this quantity here, this R over R zero minus one, can also be set to be equal to delta lambda over lambda zero, or it could be equal to V over C. So you can set them equal to each other as needed. So what is this going on? Uh, this is the red shift. That's just this unitless number. Um, R is a scale factor. That's like the size of the universe. And we don't really put units. We're like, uh, we don't know what to put here. Basically, it's the size of the universe now. And then R0 is like the size of the universe initially. What we're doing is we're comparing different things. We're saying, ah, what size was the universe when this light reached us? Because in order for us to get a Z value, we actually have light that actually has to reach us. So when that light left in order to get to us, there was a size of the universe when the, when the light left. That's R0, where R means the size of the universe now. So this is a relation. That's about all you really need to know from this piece. We have something else called Hubble's Law. And it says that, remember, all the galaxies seem to be going away from us. That's what we call a recession speed. Like it literally is a speed going away. Um, it's very often measured in kilometers per second. That's often how we do it. But it could be in uh, all sorts of other units, right? But it can be lots of other units. Distance d, this could be in light years. It could be in parsec. It could be in meters, I guess. It could be whatever units you want. Um, could be in furlongs per fortnight. Oh, no, that's not a distance. Uh, it could be whatever distance you want. So that would be a speed. Um, but it turns out Hubble's law, named after good old pal Hubble, Edwin Hubble, uh, he figured out, or at least got credit for, the fact that seems like it's pretty much linear. In other words, uh, it looks like this speed v is directly proportional to d. So if you remember your equations, remember y equals mx plus b, we can actually write an equation for this. We can say instead of y, because remember it goes y equals mx, there's no plus b because it uh, crosses through the origin here, so b is zero. So we can say y equals mx. Well, in this case, instead of that, we say v. Let's do it maybe in red. We can say, okay, so we have uh, v. Actually, I'll do it in green because it's an equation we need. goes v equals, that's like the y equals some constant times x, and the x in this case is d. So you see we have to put some constant in front of it, and now we actually call it h0. We call that the Hubble constant, oddly enough. So we can actually define these things right here. We say v is the recession speed, so that's the speed. That could be in, let's say, in meters per second or whatever unit you want. Um, H0 is called the Hubble constant. It's got some crazy units, but uh, you just have to play around sometimes. The questions on exams have you playing around with that. There's a lot of effort to try to find H0, basically. And D is your distance to these galaxies or whatever you're looking at. And again, this could be in light years or in meters or in parsec or whatever you want. So basically, uh, you just have to be very careful with your units. Then your Hubble constant will have different units if you use different units for distance. That's all. So this is it. So in other words, if you can do this graph, the slope of the graph, because remember that's what h0 is. h0 is the gradient of the graph. So that means the gradient of this graph is h0. So if you can actually take a data of the recession speed versus distance, you can actually determine h0. Now, why do we care about h0? It does a lot of other things for us, because remember this whole thing about uh, redshift here. But it turns out, this is just a better version of Hubble's law here with some nicer graphs, but this is really what it looks like. Um, and this says here again, velocity is Hubble constant times distance. Remember, V equals H zero D, what I just wrote here. So that's what this means, V equals H D. Turns out we can find the age of the universe. I love this astronomy exam, asks the age of the universe, Big Bang Theory theme song memorized. Remember that? The whole universe was in a hot, dense state then nearly 14 billion years ago. Ah, so there it is, 13.7. Let's figure out how do we know the age of the universe? Uh, this seems really cheap, but this is a way to do it. You can say, well, velocity is distance over time, isn't it? But I just said before that velocity was also this Hubble equation, V equals H0D. 
So what if I take this and I put it here for V? In other words, I take this D over T, that's V, and I set it equal to this thing. So D over T equals H zero D. Do you notice the Ds would cancel out? They cancel out, so I get one over T equals H zero. Or conversely, if I put the T on the top and the H zero on the bottom, I have T equals one over H zero. Turns out that's it. It's that cheap. So basically, if you can find the Hubble constant, if you can find out what value the Hubble constant has, then if you do one over the Hubble constant, that should be the age of the universe, which is crazy, isn't it? So it sounds really cheap, but it turns out this is one of the reasons why we're trying to find H zero accurately is because we want to find out how old is the universe. And depending on what value you put in for H zero, you get different ages of the universe. But it turns out things are really narrowed down to 13.7. Seems like that's the age of the universe. Isn't that cool? So like this, uh, so, <laughs> this is so cheap. According to astronomy, when you wish upon a star, you actually feel a million years too late. The star is dead, just like your dreams. Obviously, that's not exactly the case, because if it's a K or M dwarf, as they call it, like a little red dwarf, it hasn't died. But anyway. Uh, so here's an example. We have a quasar. By the way, a quasar is a really distant uh, light source. It's some of the brightest things we know of in the universe. So uh, distance is de uh, quasars detected with a redshift of 3.2. What is redshift again? Do you remember what letter that is? That's Z. So you know that Z is 3.2. The question is calculate the speed at which it's currently moving relative to the Earth. So find its speed. So we need an equation for Z. Do you remember some? Let's see here. If we go back, we have something for Z. We have this one right here. Z is just equal to V over C. It's actually that easy. See that? So we just have that. So let's go back here and say fine then. So Z equals just a V over C. That means 3.2 equals V over C. So if we want the speed, just get V by itself. Just put the C over. So that means you just have V equals 3.2 C. That is the answer. And I want you to think very carefully about this. Turns out that was that easy. The velocity that it is moving relative to the Earth is 3.2 times the speed of light. And you might think, no, nothing's allowed to go faster than the speed of light. Agreed. No information can travel the speed of light, like faster than the speed of light. What this tells you is that right now, currently, that quasar is going so fast, light from that quasar couldn't reach us. Because you see, the speed of light is the limit to how fast things can actually travel within the universe. That is true. That hasn't been broken. But there's nothing that says the universe itself can't expand faster than the speed of light. In fact, that's what's happening. This happens. So the universe itself is expanding faster than the speed of light, which means we have this area where we'll never be able to see information. We're never going to get new light from there. It can never reach us. It'll never get to us, which is a little bit crazy. Now, you might say estimate the ratio of the current size of the universe to its size when the quasar emitted these photons. What about the size of the universe? Then we need that other equation here, that one right here that has, um, where is it, r over r0 minus 1. So we'll write that down. So we'll say, fine, we have that uh, z equals r over r0 minus 1. It's actually this easy. We just put in the 3.2, which we got. So we have 3.2 equals r over r0 minus 1. We can just move the minus 1 over. That's a plus 1. So we get 4.2 equals r over r0. See that this is the current size of the universe. That's this size now compared to the size before, size when the uh, photons were emitted. So what it tells you, the universe is now 4.2 times bigger than it was when the uh, light left those, uh, when those photons left that quasar. 